Uh, okay, thank you very much, everyone. Um, good to be here. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll skip the introduction as Kim did a very good one already. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I lived in Thailand for for 10 years or so, um, and I was also here for the um, first Pike on Thailand back in 2018. So good to see it's uh, still going. Um, today I want to cover. Um, Two different calendar systems uh, that have been used in Thailand over the years. Um, we'll cover a few kind of basics about what are calendars and how do they work. Um, then look at um, um, a, a lunar solar calendar that uses both the, the moon and the sun, and then a, a lunar calendar that just uses the moon. And alongside that, I'll give some uh, um, some examples in the Pi Tide 8 module uh, that I've written to, to calculate these calendars. So in terms of what is a, a calendar and the basics, um, the, the calendars are uh, based around the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, and the characteristics that can be observed from them. So the, the Earth uh, rotates, making a day. It orbits around a Sun, making uh, a year. The Moon orbits around the Earth, uh, which is roughly a month, but not quite. Um, and then the Earth also tilts on its axis as well over time, and that creates the seasons during the year. So with the moon, um, perhaps the most visible part of it is um, how the sun falls on it and creates a different crescent shape at uh, different times during the, the month. Um, this is also important for uh, religious purposes. Um, uh, with Buddhism, have one pra, the, the Buddhist Sabbath, and that falls on the, the new moon, the full moon, and the quarter moons which is roughly every seven days, although not exactly. Um, and also, um, it's important to know whether it's waxing or waning. When it's waxing, the, the crescent shape is growing in size. When it's waning, it, it's getting smaller. We'll come back to some of this a bit later on. And then we've got three basic types of calendar. The, the lunar calendar only works with the moon. Uh, it doesn't really pay attention to what the sun's doing. Um, the lunar month is a roughly 29 and a half uh, days. Um, so in a lunar calendar, you typically alternate 29 days, 30 days to keep that 29 and a half average. Now, this doesn't fit into a solar year, a solar year being roughly 365 days per year. Um, so with 12 months, you get 354 days. So that means your lunar calendar goes out of sync with the sun and the seasons. So we can have a loony solar calendar where we can combine the two, um, both using the uh, solar year of 365 and a bit days, um, but also adding in some additional days, um, uh, a leap, leap day or leap month, um, so that we can bring the length of that calendar up and keep it in sync with the, uh, the, the sun. Um, in, in the West, um, we used to use the Julian calendar, which came from the the Romans, uh, it wasn't so accurate and it went out of, out of sync with the seasons. Um, and then from about 1582, um, Western countries started to introduce the Gregorian calendar, which changed the number of leap days or intercalary days uh, that were inserted into the year. So the Julian calendar was one every four years, exactly 200. Uh, leap days per 800 years. Um, th this 800 year figure is a good way to measure the accuracy of the, um, the calendars and we'll see that from the Thai calendars later as well. The Gregorian calendar has a little bit less, 194 per 800 years. So that means the average duration of the year is slightly different. 365 and a quarter for Julian, 365.2425 for Gregorian. Um, the current Thai calendar um, that's commonly in use now <coughs> is based on the Gregorian calendar, um, but it has a different starting point, a different epoch um, based on the Buddhist religion. In the box at the bottom, I've quoted some of the uh, Python documentation from the date-time module, uh, and this shows that the date-time module is based on the Gregorian calendar. It, it extends it. Um, I don't think it is actually indefinite uh, in the code. I think there's minimums and maximums for the dates, but it ex expands it in both directions uh, and works off Gregorian calendar. Now, to compare calendars, 
um, I'm using a thing called Julian Day Numbers. Um, and this is a reference point from 1st January 4713 BC, um, and you increment one per day, and it gives you a, a linear progression that you can then map other calendars against. Um, there's a screenshot here from NASA. They have a little calculator online, so you can um, get these Julian Day numbers and compare them to dates. And then through Thai history, um, there's been several different periods um, in history when different calendars have been used. So from the early kind of Sukha Thai um, kingdom days, um, there was the Mahasakara period, uh, which was lunisolar, and then that changed later on from uh, Ayutthaya up until uh, King Chula Longkorn of Chula Sakara, and we're going to look in, into that in more detail in a bit. Um, then moving on a a bit further to the, the late 19th century, um, there was the solar calendar introduced, uh, the Ratna Korsin era, um, and then on to the modern day uh, Buddhist calendar. Um, but we'll look at the Chula Sakrak calendar um, and then uh, one other uh, lunar calendar later on. So, from this calendar, um, this was based on a calendar used by the Burmese or in Myanmar. And that, in turn, was developed from the old Indian calendars. Um, this is lunisolar, so we have references both to the, the sun and to the moon. Um, the solar year uh, is normally 365 days, same as we have in Gregorian. Um, but it has a different number of intercalary days, or leap days. So 207 per 800 years uh, versus Gregorian, that was uh, 194. Um, we've got some sums there to see how that's worked out. Uh, it gives you 292,207 days per 800 years, um, and these numbers will become important as we go through the slides. Um, this also lets you calculate the average duration of a day, um, and this ends in 0.25875, making it a little bit longer than the Gregorian year. And then looking at the lunar portion of this, um, there can be three lengths of a lunar uh, year. Um, when there is 12 months, they're alternating of 29, 30 days to keep the 29 and a half day uh, average, and that gives us a, a total of 354 days in the year. Now, obviously, that's going to go out of sync uh, with the solar year, so we can also add in uh, an intercalary day, a leap day, add in one, three, five, five days. Um, that will be placed at the end of the third month, or we can add an additional month of 30 days uh, after the fourth month, giving us 384 days longer than the, um, the, the solar year. Now, it's a little bit quirky, the way that the, the Thai calendar is kind of uh, enumerated. Um, months typically aren't referenced by name, um, there are names based on um, Sanskrit, um, but the numbers start at five for the first month if you're in Sukhothai or Ayutthaya. Um, up in the Shan State, northern Myanmar, it's six. In Chiang Mai, it's seven. Um, so you need to know where a calendar reference was written um, to know what it actually means. Um, they don't start at one, but then neither do the Gregorian months either. We're in December. Um, the, the prefix dec on December means 10, but it's the 12th month of the year. Um, likewise, November, uh, Nova means 9 in Latin. Um, Oct for October is, is 8. So the, the Gregorian months are offset as well with their numbering. It's also possible with the Thai calendar to have more than 12 months in a year. Um, so if, a, a, as we'll see, a month starts um, partway through the first month, that early part of the month is then added on, on to the end of it. So you get two references to one month uh, in a year. Um, the New, year, New Year's Day never starts on the first of the first month, or the fifth month, or the sixth, or the seventh, depending how you count them. It will start between the sixth day and the fifth day of the second month, sometimes the sixth day, depending on some exceptions. So it's a little bit complicated. This also makes it difficult to create um, um, a, a date class that works in the same way as the date-time um, 
date class. When you've got a month that, that can appear twice um, in, in the same year, or sometimes you insert a 13th month partway through, these things that can't, uh, they can't really be represented well uh, within the standard date. Um, when we calculate these calendars, um, it's very simple in terms of the mathematics. There's, there's no you know, trigonometry or anything that you might expect with calculating planetary positions and, and things. It's all very simple integer um, arithmetic, um, integer division, um, using modulo as well for getting the remainders uh, of those divisions. So from here, we can look back to the the Indian calendars that this all developed from. Um, these calendars have a cycle of 4.32 million years with 1.577 billion days in it. Um, that number's important, we'll come back to that a bit later. But in Southeast Asia, when these calendars oops, spread across the, the continent, um, they were simplified, they were divided by 5,400, which instead of 4.3 million years, gives us 800 years, and again, we get that figure of 292207 days that we saw earlier. Now, this gives us a, um, a fraction of a day that's left over, and again, the, the Thai calendar divides this by 800, so that gives us 207 eight hundredths of a day. And from that, we can also see that the Jula Sakrak period, um, on the timeline from the Indian calendar, it actually starts with an offset of 373 eight hundredths of a day. And we can work out the number of seconds that is per eight hundredths. And we can find out that that period started at 11 minutes past 11 and 24 seconds. So it's kind of precise. Um, although back then they didn't use hours, minutes, and seconds. They had different units. So now we can get into some of the, the basic calculations. Uh, there's six or seven. Um, um, parameters that can be calculated here. Uh, the first one is the Horakun, um, and apologies if my Thai pronunciation is not very good. Um, but this is, um, uh, um, it increments every day um, by one. Um, so this is similar to the Julian day number we looked at earlier. This is the way we can convert between different calendars. Uh, we can add on a constant to convert the, the Horakun into the um, Julian day number. Uh, we then have the Kama Coupon, which is the 800 complement of the modulo of, of that. Um, and this gives us the time remaining um, in, in a day, again, in 8 hundredths uh, of a day, or 108 second units. And the last one, the Ukupon, I won't say much about. It's related to the, um, to the moon. I'm not using it in the calculations here, but it is part of calculating planetary positions. Um, but I've not implemented that yet. Um, I think with these three, um, start at the bottom uh, with this one, um, the, the TT, the lunar day, um, this isn't quite the same as a solar day. And the lunar day is measured, um, as the diagram shows, when you've got the position of the Earth looking at the sun, and if the moon has moved at 12 degrees, then that's counted as a lunar day. This varies between 21 to 26 hours. We can kind of consider an average of 24, so we can in some ways consider it to be similar to a, a solar day. And also from this, we can tell the phase of the moon. Is it waxing or waning that we saw earlier on? Um, if it's uh, 1 to 15, uh, then it's waxing. Uh, the crescent shape of the moon is getting bigger. Um, if it's um, beyond that, then it's waning, it's getting smaller. The Marsican in the middle, um, this, is, this calculates the number of lunar months since the epoch. So a fairly simple value to understand. But then this, this one at the top, um, the Awa Man, um, is a bit more complex. This is the difference between the number of lunar days that we've seen are a bit different from a solar day versus the solar days. And it's measured in a unit of 692 of a lunar day modulo 692, uh, or you just add 11 units per day to keep it simple. Um, now this comes from that big number of days, the 1.577 billion uh, days that we saw earlier. That's the number of solar days. 
if you work out the number of lunar days in that same 4.32 million years that the Indian calendar uh, cycle lasts for, you'll find that there's 1.6 billion lunar days, a little bit more than the solar days. That simplifies down to a ratio of 703 to 692, with a difference of 11, and that's where we get in the plus 11 units per solar day uh, for this calculation. Now these last two here are derivatives. We're taking the, the parameters we've just calculated. We can take the horicron, we can do a modulo of seven, and it gives us the day of the week. Uh, zero is a Saturday, um, so a four would be a Wednesday. Um, this is a bit simplified, because if you also look at the, the planetary positions on the calendar, uh, including two planets that don't actually exist, Rahu and Ketu, um, then you can also work out there's an eighth day, uh, which is on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, that's another difficulty for the date module uh, and trying to implement this in, in Python. For New Year's Day, uh, we need to figure out where does this start. It doesn't start on the, the first day of the first month in the year. We saw earlier that if it starts before the sixth day, we have to move it on to the next month. So we do that by just adding on 29, which is the number of days in that first month. And then we need to figure out where are the leap days and the leap months. The, the solar leap day is fairly simple. We take the Kamakupun. If it is uh, less than or equal to 127, we have a solar uh, leap day uh, in, the, in, the, in that year. For the lunar side of it, it's a bit more complicated. We start off assuming that we have a year of just 12 months, 354 days. But if the horicon is greater than 24 or less than 6, we assume it's got a, an extra month, an intercalary month, making it 384 days. But then if it's equal to 25 and the horicon of the next year is 5, we reset it back to 354 days. So this means to work out one particular year, you have to look at the years around it and calculate those. We then have to look at is there a solar leap year or is there not, depending on different values. We then see if it's 355 days having an extra leap day, or if not, I've got this value here of y adjust. And this means that the calculation shows there is both an intercalary month and intercalary day in the same year, which isn't allowed by the Thai calendar rules. It is allowed in the Burmese calendar, uh, but not in the Thai one. So you then need to figure out how to move that intercalary day to an alternate year uh, without messing up the days of the week and the, the day numberings. I've not put the code in here. You can have a look at it on, on GitHub. There's also a footnote here, also on GitHub, uh, is a reference to this, this article where there's an explanation of how, um, how this, this algorithm can be done to adjust the, the year. So here we have a worked example. This is just working out New Year's Day for random year 1270. So we work out the Horakun, the Kamakupon, we'll ignore the Ukupon for now, the Awaman, and then the Maskin. You can see that the remainder, so the remainder 63, is coming down to the Kamakupon, and these numbers are getting used in, in each different line. Uh, we get down to the TT, which is 14. Because it's less than or equal to 15, it's a waxing uh, moon. Um, and then we have the, uh, the weekday four from this uh, becomes a Wednesday. And then from that, we know the, um, um, we, we know the, 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 the full date. We can work out that the month is five because the TT is 14 and therefore falls within the first month of the year, month number five. So therefore it's 1270, Chula Sakrak, month five, waxing moon 14, Wednesday. Here we've got some code examples of this being worked out. Um, CS date represents this, this calendar. Um, this from YD uh, method is from year and day, day here being a, a zero index 
um, day count in the year, zero being New Year's Day. And this works out 1275.14 that we saw on the previous slide. We've got properties for the Horican, for the Julian Day. We've got a string representation of the dates that I've just read out. Um, in just in Thai, it, it doesn't show it in English. Um, we can see various other parameters, how many days are in the year, is it a solar leap year, uh, and so on. So this in some ways is a date-like interface, but it's not a subclass of the Python um, uh, date object. Uh, another example here, there's some helper functions uh, in the code to convert Julian, dates, uh, Julian days to, to dates. And this does the reverse calculation. Uh, we take that 1275.14, uh, get it into a, uh, a Python date object, and it tells us it was the 15th of April 1908 in Gregorian calendar. Um, there is also a, a little script that comes with this CS today. So from your command line, you can get a Thai representation of, of the calendar for the current day. So then that's that calendar done. And now I want to look at a lunar calendar, which this, this was printed on screen earlier. Um, and you'll notice I skillfully avoided saying it because I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. Um, I think it's um, patitin, meaning calendar, patitin pakakatnatna, but that's probably wrong. I got a thumbs up, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, pronunciation guide. Um, and the, the etymology, where does this come from? Um, Paka means uh, kind of half month or, or fortnight. Um, Katnana uh, is Kamnoan um, calculation. Um, so those two go together to, to calculate a, a half month. Now this calendar um, is used um, um, for, for finding out the, um, the Buddhist Sabbath and it does it a bit more accurately than the lunisolar calendar we were looking at before. So this, this was, the invention was credited to, to King Mongkut. Um, he created this um, so that having seen the lunisolar uh, calendar could be up to two days out from the, the true moon position. Um, he wanted to make sure that the, um, the Buddhist Sabbath could be celebrated at the correct time. And this is the result of it. So it has a different epoch. Uh, starting in 1736 AD in Gregorian. And the cycle is a little bit smaller than the lunisolar, uh, 289,000 days rather than 292,000. Um, the picture on here comes from uh, Wikipedia. Um, often this calendar is shown on a, on a kind of a pegboard uh, and can be calculated from that. Um, and here's one I made in a spreadsheet. So along the top here, we have 18 numbered columns, one to 18. Um, we then, down the, the rows uh, at the bottom, have two groupings of numbers which represent days of the month. One of them is 15 days, one of them is 14 days. At the top, we have the main grouping, and you'll see that there's just two Thai characters uh, used in here. More Ma, which represents Maha, or great, um, um, and Georgian, uh, Jula, uh, meaning lesser, minor, or smaller. From these, where the top row, for example, is highlighted with a more ma representing where a pin or a peg would be put in the board, that references more ma on the next line. We have another one and another one, and then we go to um, uh, Georgian, which goes down to the bottom uh, row of the next grouping and then back to Mulma for the days of the week. The representations of this calendar is based purely on the numbers that are highlighted in, in that kind of orangey color. So we've got 6, 11, 5, 2, 2, 10 as, as a numer nu numeric representation. And this is of 1st of January 2000 in Gregorian. We calculate this fairly simply. We've got in the table in the divisor uh, column, we've got five numbers that we successively divide into a, into a horicon. The horicon on this is different from the other calendar because it's a different epoch. But we start with the Julian day number, subtract a constant to get the horicon. 
and then we're dividing again integer division going down the uh, the list and that with the addition of one to each of those remainders uh, is giving us our 611522 that we saw on the board we do need to be a bit careful with some of the calculations though um, there's at least one horicon I know of that gives an overflow um, where we have um, a certain length in each of the rows. There's at least this one that's shown here that gives an overflow um, and needs to be reworked um, with, a, with a, a bit of care to get the correct value. So for this, there's, there's a few different representations we have here. There's the full text string um, here in Thai. Um, there's numeric abbreviations, um, giving the same example of the 611 one we saw before. Um, this can be without or with a cycle. Um, so this, this calendar we saw uh, repeats every 280,000 something days. Um, we can prefix this as a one for the first uh, cycle, two for the second cycle, and so on. Uh, as I mentioned, the Horicon value for this calendar isn't compatible uh, with the other calendar we looked at due to the different epochs. There's also an alphanumeric uh, representation um, with both letters uh, and numbers. So where a value is in the, uh, the Maha uh, row, it's uh, with a uh, number. Uh, and where it's in the Jula row, it's with letters. Um, and this particular example of given is one of the um, few uses for the um, core con letter, uh, which is now obsolete and has been for some time. So a few examples uh, from this, um, in, importing the, the class. You can create this object in several ways. This one, we're giving it a Julian day number. Um, we can see the same value of the Horicon that we've seen in the example, the string representation, the codes. Um, there's a few other values we can put out of this. Uh, is this a Buddhist Sabbath? Is one pra as a property for true or false? Is it a waning or waxing moon? And again, you can work with this from the, the Julian Day helper functions for the um, uh, getting the Julian Day numbers. We can work with time deltas. It's the same for the Tula Sakrak object as well. We can add and subtract uh, time deltas from that object. We can do comparisons as well. So it's, it's a date-like um, uh, object, although it doesn't implement everything. And as with the other calendar, I've done a little command line script as well. So if you really need an ASCII representation of this calendar, uh, you can have this in your, in your terminal. So in terms of implementation details, and, and just to wrap up, going back to the Python documentation, the, the date time module is based on the Gregorian calendar, whereas these lunar and lunisolar calendars are not. Uh, they are very different, different number of months per year. Um, the second calendar doesn't even use years. Uh, it's purely based on, um, on the lunar cycle. So it's very difficult to, to subclass date uh, and make these work well. Um, in the footnotes, there, there's a couple of other lunar calendars, um, Chinese lunar calendars, that have been implemented in Python. Um, and these are also... Um, um, uh, done in, the, in a similar way that they're not subclass in the, the, the date object. Uh, in terms of what I've implemented here, um, there's enough to convert between calendars. Um, I haven't implemented some features, planetary calculations. I'm only supporting the Sukhothai numbering format, um, the, the string format and parsing um, methods aren't implemented. Um, and from the Python date um, class, the ordinal and ISO methods, I've just admitted, they're not particularly relevant to this. So in summary, looked at two different calendar systems from, from Thai history, um, presented a, a basic working example, um, partially complete, and um, perhaps get time next year to, to finish them off. Thank you. There's, so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I'll just add, there's the GitHub um, URL there. Um, also, it's in PyPy, so you can just do a pip install with it as well and uh, have a play around with it. Any questions before I finish up? 
Yes, question at the back. Nice, nice presentation. Um, since we're dealing with date and time, I have to ask the question. Uh, there's no concept, obviously, of time zone and no concept of daylight savings, right? Th th this is not applicable. Um, no, it's, it's not applicable with these calendars. Um, yeah, back then when these were being used, time zones weren't so important. You know, we're mainly looking at using a boat to travel around the world rather than flying. Um, there was also some changes around time zone in Thailand as well. Um, I think it was around, I think the 1920s until then, um, Bangkok was six hours, 42 minutes and so many seconds offset from GMT rather than sort of seven hours as it is now. Um, that's because the, um, the National Observatory or the Royal Observatory um, was was in the um, uh, in the grounds of the royal palace, um, so it, it used the exact meridian of, of where it was located, rather than the seven hour uh, offset. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Did the Thai uh, year change from? Uh, First of January, it was originally in Songkran. Yes. When was that? Uh, that was in the early 1940s, possibly 1941. Um, the prime minister at the time, uh, Pibun Songkran, um, declared that he would fully adopt the Gregorian calendar, uh, albeit with the the year based on on Buddhism. Um, and around that time, there's actually a Wikipedia arc article about this in English. Um, the preceding um, year in the Thai calendar only had nine months. So you had nine months of a year, and then you cut over to this earlier New Year's Day that was 1st of January rather than, um, rather than March, April time. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, I think, question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, yes, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, since uh, I have a rough calculations on like a piece of paper w when I uh, studying on the history, and also I, I just want to know how, uh, like, how much on percentage, mm -hmm. like, how it be in uh, cor is correctly uh, calculating. Okay. Um, yeah, good question. Um, the way the, the lunar solar calendar developed over the centuries and the way that the leap days and leap months were added in, especially the leap months, um, the standard changed over time. And also it wasn't um, always agreed. Um, there's some examples in the literature of different temples and the monks at the temples having arguments with each other that one thinks it has an extra month in the year and the other one doesn't and there's a bit of arguments and um, um, yeah so when you look at these calendars you can't guarantee that anyone is accurate or definitive. The software that I've done here follows the 19 year cycle of the moon, the, the metonic cycle. So over the long term it is accurate but a particular date or particular year may be out by an intercalary day or month, but you'll find that with, with any implementation of this because there's no set standard. Um, and another question is, uh, when we uh, have a code um, for uh, PyTai dates, uh, do we actually need to install more libraries for calculation? No, it's all pure Python, uh, nothing else is needed. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So I think that's probably, Oh, why did I do this? <laughs> yeah, I, I think we need another presentation for that. Um, but in, in summary, a few years back, I was working on digitizing some of the first Thai calendars um, from a, a missionary called Dan Beach Bradley. Um, started publishing them in the 1840s. Um, and I read a, a Thai master's thesis that um, criticized him a bit for being inaccurate 
and pointed out that on the masthead of the newspaper, the, the Western date and the Thai dates they published didn't always match up. Um, so I started reading about this, um, but I've not actually gone back to check those newspapers yet, so <laughs> I, I don't know if it was accurate or not. But yeah, that's, that's the, the short version of it. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone.